The frame is a TV when it is powered on but hit the power switch on the remote and the TV transforms into a masterpiece. What's going on guys welcome back to a new video and today I'm gonna review this gorgeous piece of tech. So this is the Samsung Frame TV 2020 model and this one is 50 inches. And this review should be valid for pretty much any size Frame TV you pick up. The major difference being that if you get the 55 inch frame and above then you get a 120 hertz panel. 50 inch and below is limited to 60 hertz. Alright, so this video will be divided into different parts. So if you want to skip to any particular part, you can do that by checking the video description. So we will be starting off this review by talking about the design. We will check out the one connect box, which is sitting over there. And then we will move on to the picture quality and sound quality. We will check out all the aspects of this TV. Also, just a little disclaimer on this camera. The picture does look a little bit more oversaturated than it really is. So do keep that in mind. Also, because of the TV's refresh rate, sometimes it causes some artifacting on the camera, but in real person, the picture quality is perfect. All right, so I will start off by talking to you guys about the design of the Samsung Frame TV. Now, as the name suggests, this one is actually designed to look like a picture frame. So if I come up close and if we take a look at the corners of the TV, you can see that little line over there so yeah this one is actually designed to look like a photo frame and here's an actual photo frame and you can see the design is very very similar and the TV is also a little bit thick so it's not super duper thin you've got the Samsung branding over there so yeah this TV genuinely looks like a picture frame and these frames are customizable you can buy more of them in my country they are not available but yeah you do get customizable frames with different colors and they attach magnetically to the TV. You also get the studio stand but I'd rather buy the Serif TV if I want to buy the studio stand. And I have seen reviews where people actually criticize the bezels of this TV and yes that is true the bezels on this TV are a little bit thick but the thing is guys that has been done intentionally to make the TV look like a photo frame or a big painting. And there is a reason behind why Samsung has designed this TV to look like a picture frame. So if I grab my remote and hit the power button on the remote, the TV will turn itself off and it will display an artwork. So the TV kind of transforms into a masterpiece as soon as you press the standby button on the remote. And I think the biggest contributing factor that makes this TV look like a photo frame is that it mounts without having any gaps at the back. So the TV comes with a no gap wall mount. You can probably see the TV does not have any gap at the back. And that is one of the signature features of the frame TV. So this is how you would usually mount an LED TV. It will always have space at the back. And when you look from the side, you will be able to see all that junk that is behind the TV. And this is how the Samsung frame looks like. There is no space at the back, so you won't see any junk or any clutter of cables at the back of the TV. But in case you want to turn the TV off, all you have to do is long press the power button and the TV turns off. Press the power button once again and it comes back on into the art mode and then press the power button again and it will go back to the source that you had selected before. So I guess the concept behind your TV displaying artwork when it's idle is that Samsung doesn't want you to have a black rectangle hanging on your wall. They kind of want the TV to display some content or the other. So now let me take you to the art store and show you the free artworks and then I will show you how to set your very own photo as an artwork. Okay, so the way you access the art store is by pressing the home button on the remote and then go to the left and click on art and this will take you to the art store. And like I said, this is a paid subscription based service. So the monthly plan is about 300 rupees. First month is free. After that, this is a paid subscription based service. 
and you get 20 artworks that are free so let me show you these are the artworks that come pre-installed on the TV and these are free but the thing is you can set your very own photos as an artwork so I've got my USB drive plugged in over there there are some photos inside there so go to my collection then my photos these are the photos that I've copied and here is my USB drive the way you save this is select save to my photos and then select whichever pictures you want to save to the TV and then save selected it's very very easy and now they will appear over here so this is how it will look like in art mode and you can customize the sides of the photo so press the top button on the remote and you can change the color of the mount I think this one looks good sand it kind of matches the color so after that press the center key and this is how it looks like now awesome right guys also there are some settings over here you can adjust the brightness of the displayed artwork then you have sleep mode set the frame to turn off automatically if there is no motion detected in the room so there's a small motion sensor down there if it detects that no one is in the room the TV will automatically switch off and power down so that it does not waste any power then you also have motion detection sensitivity you can change it if the TV is going to sleep and then you have night mode the frame will turn off if there is no light detected in the room so this TV is also quite smart it will turn off the art mode automatically if there is no light in the room and also if there is no one in the room it will automatically switch itself off so if I press the power button now it should display my very own photo just like that and does look quite awesome now I'm not sure if you guys have noticed but there are no cables coming out from the TV. So if I pan my camera down here, if I sweep, you guys will not be able to see a single cable. So usually there is a power cable, two or three HDMI cables and maybe an RCA cable which goes from your setup box to the TV. Just like this old LED TV does. But the frame does not have any visible cables that are running out from the TV. And because the design is such that the TV sits so close to the wall, there is really no space at the back for the cables to run out from the TV. So what Samsung has done is that they have separated out the electronics from the TV and now you have a separate box which is called Samsung One Connect box. So all your stuff, HDMI, RCA cables, the power cable plug in into this box which is completely separate from the TV. And there is one single super thin translucent cable which runs from the box to the TV. And I think the cable is called Samsung One Invisible Cable. So that tiny little cable carries the video signal, the sound signal and the power for the LED panel. So where is that tiny little cable? Well if you pay close attention it is right over there. So that cable is semi-transparent and it is very very hard to see so it's right over there. So that kind of cuts all the clutter from the back of your TV and you don't have those big bulky wires running at the back. All your stuff now plugs in into the One Connect box. So this is the Samsung One Connect box and what a beautiful piece of tech this is. So all your input connections are on the back. Let me just flip this over. And one thing though, this box is so freaking heavy. It's full of heat sinks inside there. So I'm guessing the main processor is also inside over here. All right, so you've got the terrestrial cable in and then you have the AV in, in case you wanna plug in your old AV gear, you have this cable. It goes in like this and then you have the RCA jacks over here. Then you have the SPDIF optical out, the LAN port. This TV also has Wi-Fi, but I prefer using LAN. And then you have your four HDMI ports and this is where the One Connect cable plugs in. So this is the Samsung's One Invisible cable. So this tiny little cable carries power, it carries the video signal and the sound signal from the One Connect box to the TV. So yeah, we've got all that stuff running from the single semi-translucent cable and this is kind of very difficult to spot when it is properly installed on the TV. Now because you also have the power input on the One Connect box that kind of eliminates the need of having a power switch or the power socket at the back of the TV. So yeah like you said the TV sits flush with the wall so you don't need to add a power socket at the back of the TV. This single cable carries the power from the box to the TV. 
and then if you haven't noticed on the right side of the box we have two usb ports this one is for plugging in dongles i have my wireless mouse dongle plugged in and this one supports hard drives and usb drives so this one can provide up to one amp of current and when you are mounting your tv make sure that you have enough space to accommodate the one connect box and this one does get nice and toasty when you are playing games at 4k 60 fps so proper ventilation is required for this okay so now let us talk a bit about the picture quality the frame tv uses a qled panel with a resolution of 3840 into 2160 that is 4K or UHD. But the resolution is not everything. Just because a TV has a 4K display does not mean the picture quality magically improves over 1080p. There are a few things that make up good picture quality. And one of the most important aspects that make up a good picture quality is the TV's contrast. Now this is where the frame TV really shines. You can see blacks are completely blacks. It's not like OLED type of a black but it is still very very dark compared to some other TVs that I've seen in the market. So that's because this TV has a VA panel not an IPS panel. If you get a TV with an IPS panel it's gonna have that backlight bleed problem and that kind of makes blacks look a little bit grey. So let me do a quick comparison. Here is a TV with an IPS panel. So this is the exact same game starting up on this TV and you can see how much light bleed there is. Both the TVs are set to 50% brightness. This is actually not a defect, this is just the way IPS panels are. And coming back to the Samsung frame, you guys can see blacks are completely blacks. So the thing is, because this TV has such high contrast ratio, you guys will absolutely enjoy watching movies and playing video games in the dark. So I've got the lights turned down in my room and you guys can see blacks are completely black it's not like oled type of a black oled will display deeper blacks than this tv that's because oled is an emissive technology and the pixels on an oled tv generate their own light this tv is similar to an lcd tv it needs a strong led backlight to illuminate the pixels and even though this is a VA type panel, the pixels will still bleed a tiny tiny amount of light. So don't expect OLED type of a black on this TV but still the black level on this TV is very impressive considering it's a QLED panel. And another advantage of having a QLED panel is the wide color gamut. Now you might be able to tell this is a semi gloss screen so you will get a little bit of reflection on the screen. So you can see the reflections from the mouse mat and the keyboard. The reflections do look more pronounced on the camera but in real life you can barely see the reflection because I have turned up the ISO on the camera. Alrighty so I've got the lights turned back on and you guys can see the reflections from the keyboard and mouse on the screen have almost disappeared. And also you shouldn't have any problems watching movies in a bright room because the screen is semi gloss. Now you guys already know I use this TV as a dedicated PC monitor. So one of the most important things to me is that this TV should not suffer from any kind of screen burn in. And you guys already know OLED does experience screen burn in. But QLED does not. Also I'm guessing Samsung would have designed this TV keeping in mind when it's in standby mode it is displaying artwork so the screen will be on most of the time. So screen burn in is not an issue on the Samsung frame TV. Now one thing I want to say that because this is a VA type panel you do get slightly worse viewing angles compared to an IPS panel. So if I pan my camera you can see the TV loses its brightness and the colors. So yeah that's the thing with VA type panels you don't get excellent viewing angles but you do get amazing contrast ratio. So that might be an issue for some people. If you want excellent contrast plus great viewing angles then OLED is the best choice for you guys. Now coming to the input lag and the frame rate this is a 60 hertz panel. If you pick up the 55 inch frame and above you will get a 120 hertz panel. But if you pick up the 50 inch and below then you get 60 hertz. And honestly for me that is not a problem because I am not a gamer. And also the input lag is almost negligible on this TV. I can actually feel the difference. My old Sony TV did have a bit of input lag but on this TV the input lag is almost negligible. I think it's around 9 to 10 milliseconds that's what I have read in the reviews but yeah it's very very low compared to other TVs which is really good for gaming. And since we are already talking about gaming this TV also supports FreeSync 
but it does not work with nvidia graphics card because nvidia's implementation of FreeSync is slightly different so you will need a display port in case you want to use FreeSync with nvidia but for next gen consoles i think that's a great addition also the frame tv comes with hdmi 2.1 so it is ready for next gen consoles and if you do pick up the 55 inch frame you can play at 4k 120 fps over hdmi 2.1 but the thing is right now there are no graphics card that come with hdmi 2.1 so yeah i'd say this tv is a little bit more future proof also the thing is when you play video games with all the settings maxed out in 4k you see details that are just not visible on a 1080p panel also guys just want to say this tv handles motion quite well so i have not seen any image smearing during fast paced games so i would say this tv is fairly good if you want to watch sports or play fast paced games so even though the 50 inch frame has a 60 hertz panel there is no image smearing or any motion blur or any strange artifacts on the tv so yeah thumbs up from my side samsung frame also supports hdr almost every tv in the market supports hdr these days but the thing is hdr quality on the frame is good because of the high contrast ratio also finding hdr content is kind of difficult the only hdr content i was able to find was in prime video and that is grand tour obviously i cannot show it to you on the camera because that will cause a copyright claim but yeah there is hdr content available but it's scarce and because this TV is HDR compatible, you can play video games in HDR. So on your Windows desktop, if you right click and go to display settings, you have this option play HDR games and apps. So once you turn this on, HDR gets enabled. So if you go to this setting, it says play HDR games and apps, yes. Use WCG apps, that means wide color gamut apps, yes. So yes, this TV does support HDR and you can play video games in HDR on the frame TV. So now HDR is enabled on the frame. Also guys, when you play back low quality content, the TV will automatically scale the video up to 4K. Also, the TV will remove any judder or any motion artifacting so the video is super duper smooth. You won't be able to see that on camera because I am recording this at 30 FPS but yeah, the video that is playing back is actually in 30 fps but the tv is upscaling that to 60 fps so the video does look super duper smooth also the picture does get fairly bright so let me go to settings i have it set to so i have the brightness set to 20 and you guys can probably tell it's fairly bright but it goes all the way up to 50 and at 50 it's very very bright i wouldn't really keep the tv at 50 i'd say 25 is more acceptable well but i'll keep it at 20 because i am recording a video let's check out the picture settings so first off you have the picture mode it's set to standard i do prefer you keep it on standard or you keep it on movie movie is also good never ever keep it on dynamic it hurts the eye so i prefer keeping it on standard then you have the picture sizes leave it at default 16 is to 9 then expert settings you have brightness contrast sharpness Keep the sharpness at 6 for the best experience. Then you have the color, then you have tint. So now under picture clarity settings, you have these options, judder reduction, LED clear motion. I usually keep LED clear motion off. So my advice to you guys is keep LED clear motion off and turn up judder reduction to 10 if you want that smooth 60 FPS video out of low FPS videos. Then you have contrast enhancer. I like to keep it on high, that's good. Film mode is turned off right now. This function is only available when the input signal is TV, AV or component. Then you have the color tone, kept it to standard, but warm looks good, so I'm gonna keep it at warm too. Then you have white balance, leave it at default, then gamma. You have four options here, I'm gonna leave it at default. This is set to zero, shadow detail is also set to zero. RGB only mode is off, then color space setting native, and then you have reset picture. So these are the settings you get under picture. So yeah, concluding thoughts, the picture quality is excellent on the frame. After all, it's a QLED TV, 
But really you cannot compare this to more expensive models like the Q95T or an OLED TV. Those will give you better picture quality but then again those are way more expensive than the frame. But I honestly think the Samsung frame offers good price to performance ratio of course there is that unique design of this TV. Also just so you know this TV does not have local dimming to further improve the contrast but I think that's okay because the contrast of this TV is actually fairly good. Also you can plug in your high capacity hard drives. This is a 4TB hard drive formatted in NTFS and it is working fine with the TV. Right now I'm playing a 4K 60fps video and the TV has no problem running this high capacity hard drive. And lastly on the unboxing video of this TV someone was asking me what is the color depth of the Samsung Frame TV's panel. To be very honest I am not sure because there is a lot of conflicting information online. Some websites say that this TV has an 8-bit plus FRC panel. Some say that this one has a true 10-bit panel. Unless Samsung comes out and tells us which type of a panel they're using, there is really no way for me to tell you guys which kind of panel this TV has. Now, if you go to ratings.com, it says here the TV is able to display 10-bit of colors. So I'm guessing this TV might have a 10-bit panel and I will put this link in the video description. You can go to their website and check out their review. And to be honest, I don't think 10-bit color matters right now. So if you check this article out again, I'll put this link in the video description. It says here when it matters, HDR content like UHD Blu-ray players but it won't matter for cable TV, regular Blu-ray movies, video game consoles or content displayed from a Windows PC. Those are limited to 8-bit color. Also it says over here that pretty much everything is 8-bit Windows OS X, JPEG, video games, 10-bit media is very rare. The sound quality on the Samsung frame is surprisingly good. You've got two speakers at the bottom of the TV and they do a fairly good job of reproducing the sound. So let me play something. Now obviously guys, it's not gonna be on the level of a dedicated soundbar but still it's fairly good compared to some other TVs. Obviously you can tell it's a bit lacking when it comes to bass but the sound is fairly clean. Also you get a feature called Amplify, so let me turn the volume up. Honestly guys, I like to keep it on standard, I think it sounds the best and also you get equalizer which I have not set this thing up but yeah I would say that compared to other TVs the frame has fairly good sound quality but I'd still recommend that you get a home theater system or a sound bar with this TV if you want the best experience. So let me quickly show you what is inside the sound settings. So we will go to settings, sound, from here you can change the sound output to the optical out which is on the one connect box you get home theaters with optical in then you can also connect this tv to bluetooth speaker or bluetooth headset then you have the sound mode i keep it on standard you also get amplify then you can set up your wi-fi speaker surround sound setup if you have a samsung sound bar and if you go to expert settings we have the balance eq i've already shown you that HDMI eARC mode if you have a home theater that supports it. Then you have digital output audio format, digital audio output delay, Dolby Atmos compatibility, auto volume, sound feedback so that boop noise you get when you press the button on the remote you can set the volume. You can also turn it off if you want which I will do that now. So these are all these settings inside the sound menu. So that was a rundown of the picture quality and the sound of the Samsung frame. So now we will move on to the operating system. 
So there are three major operating systems for TVs in the market, Android, LG WebOS, and Samsung Tizen. So the frame being a Samsung TV is running Samsung Tizen. So to access the menu, you press the home button on the remote and this menu opens up. So you have a list of apps over here and the response time is actually fairly good. So the apps do launch fairly quickly as you guys can tell. So let's exit this. Let's quickly launch YouTube. So you guys can see apps do launch fairly quickly on the Samsung frame. That is good. Fast response times are always welcome. And if we scroll to the left, we have the art mode stuff, then the ambient mode, which I will cover later in this video and then press it again and that takes you to the app store. So on Samsung Tizen, you do get all the basic apps like YouTube, you have Facebook, you have Woot, you have Netflix, Prime Video, so all the basic apps are available, but don't expect Samsung Tizen to be like Android. Android is still the king of applications, but what I am happy is they have included Plex. So in case you wanna set up Plex media server at home, it becomes quite easy. And also you cannot sideload apps on Samsung Tizen, so you have that limitation. But if you are a simple user, you do have all the basic applications available to you on Samsung Tizen. Also, if you guys are in Apple's ecosystem, you do get Apple TV and Apple Music built into the Frame TV. You also get a dedicated internet browser. All right, so I guess that covers the apps part let's move on and on to our left we have the search button then we have the source button this shows you everything that is connected to the tv so right now i've plugged in my hard drive it is showing up over here and this tv is pretty much able to play every format that i threw at it so i've tried playing mp4 mkv they do work just fine and 4k 60 fps videos also work just fine tried it no problems at all and like i said the response time of the tv is also really really good so you just press play and the tv plays the video almost instantly so i'm really liking the response time there is minimal lag while browsing through the menus so let's go back to source and let me show you an interesting feature there is something called remote access so this will let you connect to a windows pc on your network you also have screen sharing and Apple AirPlay, which I will show you in a moment, but remote PC is something interesting. So check this out guys, I've input my credentials to connect to my Windows PC and the TV will connect to my Windows PC remotely. Connect and there you have it. That's how remote desktop works on a Samsung TV. So let's connect a Bluetooth mouse and then we will be able to control the Windows PC right from our TV. So let me just quickly connect. All right, so our Bluetooth mouse is now connected. Let's exit and now I will be able to control my Windows PC through my TV. So there you have it. That's how it works. And I think this should be, it's a bit laggy, but it should be more than enough if you wanna quickly work on Word documents and stuff. I mean, this is working remotely. So yeah, this is how remote desktop works on the Samsung Tizen. So we will disconnect and that should bring us back to the TV just like this. Samsung Frame also comes with Apple AirPlay so that kind of allows you to view your Mac screen onto your TV wirelessly. You can also do the same with an iPhone and it is fairly easy to do so. You just press the AirPlay icon on your Mac, select Samsung Frame and it should automatically connect and there you have it. So right now the TV is in multi-view mode. If you want to go full screen on the Mac, you just select and press the enter key and that should take you full screen. It's kind of refreshing and nice to see Samsung products playing along well with Apple products. So let's go back and let me show you the picture in picture mode setting. So if you press the down button on the remote, you will get these settings. You can change the screen size. You can also have picture in picture mode. So if I select this one. The Mac desktop is over there and at the background I have my HDMI source but having these side by side is a better option. So yeah you do get Apple AirPlay with the Samsung frame and you can also do the same with Windows PC so you do get wireless screen mirroring from a Windows PC to the TV. I think 
almost every TV has that feature these days. The Samsung Frame TV also has really good integration with Samsung SmartThings app. So in case you get the Samsung Frame TV, I do recommend that you download and install the SmartThings application on your Android smartphone. And this opens up a lot of possibilities. So first off, you can turn your TV on and off from your phone. It doesn't need to be on the same Wi-Fi network. And secondly, if you tap this, you have the remote control. You can browse the apps. You can change the art mode on your TV. Then you can configure ambient mode and then you have the universal guide. But one thing that I really like is two-way screen mirroring on your phone. So first off, you have the normal mirror screen. You can mirror your phone screen onto your TV. So this is your regular screen mirroring. Whatever I do on the phone is being shown on my TV. But the thing is, if you download and install Samsung Smart Things, you can actually view your TV screen onto your phone. So you kind of have this two-way screen mirroring. So if I drop down the notification panel, you can see we have an option here, TV to device. If I tap on this, So now I can see the TV screen onto my Android phone. So imagine if you have your cable box connected to your TV, you can actually watch TV on your smartphone wirelessly. That is awesome, right guys? And the SmartThings app also allows you to play sounds from your phone to the TV. So just drop down the notification panel and select this device to TV. And the phone will connect to the TV wirelessly says Galaxy Note is now connected and now I can play right so I'm playing music on my phone but it is actually being played back on the TV and the TV by itself has gone into art mode so it's displaying art and I can play music but let me show you another interesting feature so let me just disconnect this so now let me show you another interesting feature of the smart things app you can actually listen to the sounds that are playing back on your TV on your phone so just drop down the notification panel and select TV to device and this should automatically mirror the sounds that are playing on the TV onto my phone. So here's the interesting thing. You can actually plug in your wired headphones on the phone and listen to whatever that is being played on your TV. And I don't think there is much audio lag. I don't think there is any audio lag. So that is pretty much instantaneous. That's great. So the thing is, if you don't have Bluetooth headphones, what you can do is use this feature, then plug in your wired headphones on your phone and then listen to the sounds that are playing on your TV from your phone onto your wired headphones. By the way, this TV also supports Bluetooth headphones, so that's a plus point. But yeah, this is a really nice feature. This is only available if you download and install the SmartThings app. Now, one thing I wanna say that Samsung Tizen isn't really ad-free. So once you open up the menu and you press the down button, so you kinda get this advertised content. I'm not sure where the TV is picking this up from because I'm not really interested in all this. But yeah, the thing is, do expect these sort of advertisements on the TV. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the settings menu because a lot of you guys wanna see what's inside the setting menu. So I have already shown you picture, sound, Broadcasting is disabled because we are not plugged in into a cable network. Then inside general, you have intelligent mode setting. So if you enable intelligent mode, the TV will improve your viewing experience by recognizing the content, usage pattern, and the environment around your TV. I prefer keeping this off. Then you have the various voice assistants. You get Bixby and Amazon Alexa. I am not a huge fan of voice assistants, so I keep this turned off. Then inside network, you have settings for your network. Again, leave these on default. Then the system manager, you can change the time, language, device name, Samsung account, you can change the pin. This activates a screen saver when the TV displays a still image for two hours or more. Then you have the usage mode, it's set to home. You can change that to retail, leave it on home. Then you have the external device manager. So this is where you can pair your Bluetooth device inside the input device manager. So you get Bluetooth device list, keyboard setting and mouse setting. Then HDMI black level adjusts the black level on the screen. I suggest leaving it on auto. Then you have the device connection manager. Let's go back, let's go back. 
then you have the Apple AirPlay setting, then the Eco setting, and you can change the ambient light detection from over here, or you also have auto power off. Let's go back. Then you have some accessibility options here. Then you have the smart feature, auto run smart hub when the TV is turned on, I like to keep it off. And then auto run last app, I also like to keep this off. Then you have the reset option. Let's go here, then you have the support options over here then terms and privacy. So that is pretty much all there is to it to Samsung Tizen. So now let me show you a feature which is very similar to art mode but it's more intuitive. Well I'm talking about the ambient mode. So to enter ambient mode you press the home button on the one remote and then you scroll to the left hand side and then you have ambient mode. So we will just launch this. So ambient mode provides a stylish alternative to the black screen elevating living space with decorative content information and much more. So I guess the idea behind ambient mode is the same as art mode. Samsung doesn't want your TV to look like a black rectangle when it's installed on your wall. Seems interesting. It looks like it's got something like a visualization. So we will just move on from over here start ambient mode now so guys this is what you will see when you first start up ambient mode and by the way the animation color and the background color is completely customizable so once you press the bottom key but first let me show you which pattern this is so this is under decor and this one is called light grid you also have skylight floating spears light cones mood light flow table clock world clock gravity, bathtub, rotating tile, rotating disc and there is just so much more to this thing. Let's try rotating tiles. So these are rotating tiles and all of the colors are customizable so if you press the bottom key on the one remote this menu will open up. So from over here you can choose any color you like. So let's try this one. So as you guys can see the color changes then you can also change the color of the background let's try this one you can see the background color changes over there so I guess you get the idea of ambient mode the TV will display some animation so that there is no black rectangle hanging on your wall so this is a frame TV it's kind of meant to be mounted on the wall I also like this light cones this one also looks nice Oh man, that looks beautiful. Because this TV has such high contrast ratio, blacks look really dark. I mean, that looks beautiful. I mean, if you have a pattern like this running on your frame TV, when someone comes over, they will definitely be impressed. Now guys, the fun part is you can also create your very own background. You will need to take a picture of the TV and the surrounding wall. It will be saved to the background settings. So let's try this. I'm not sure if it's gonna work because I already have a table, computer, then there is a lot of stuff over there. So for me, it might not work. Okay, so all you need to do is launch smart things and under ambient mode, you select the camera icon and this will open up this page. So now we need to take a picture of the TV. We need to align this and then you take a picture like this. and the TV should automatically create a background which is very similar looking to your wall. Now this will not work for me because I've got so much stuff sitting over here but it, I just want to demonstrate the concept over here. Like I said, it didn't work for me because I've got the table, I've got this stuff sitting over here and there's a shelf at the top. But if you've got a wall without any obstructions, then the TV will be able to match the color and the pattern on your wall. I also really like this music wall ambient effect. So this one will display a visualization according to the song that's playing. So for this, we will need to connect the phone and the TV should automatically connect to my galaxy. So this is music wall. And if I change the song, the visualization also changes. So this is music wall and you can actually control your music from the TV remote so you can play a pause or check out the next song. So this one kind of looks like a window and you can probably hear that ambient sound. So you've got your time, date and temperature over there. Let's go back. Now this mood effect is something that I really like. Let's launch this. But yeah, the concept behind ambient effects is that Samsung doesn't want a black rectangle hanging on your wall. Samsung wants to show some content on your screen. That's awesome. I like that.
So now we will check the power consumption of the TV. I have unplugged everything. So when the TV is turned off, when the screen is not turned on, it consumes 0 watts. So almost negligible power consumption when the TV is in standby mode. But the thing is the TV is still connected to the internet. You can use your phone to turn the TV on even though it's in standby mode. And when the TV is displaying art, it consumes about 56 watts of power from the wall. If you get the bigger frame, it will consume slightly more power. And when the TV is playing back 4K 60fps content, the power consumption is around 62 watts. So the thing is, the power consumption also depends on the brightness of the screen. So if I change the brightness, that number will also change. So if I set the brightness to say around 5, the power consumption drops to about 50 watts. Set the brightness to 0 and the power consumption drops to 46 watts. I don't know if you guys can see but this is at 0% brightness. So now let's crank the brightness all the way up and see what we get. So at 100% brightness looks like we are consuming about 100 watts. But really you don't want to keep this on maximum brightness because the screen does get fairly bright. I keep mine on 20 so that is pretty comfortable. Okay so now moving on to the remote. This is the remote controller which comes bundled with the Samsung Frame TV. It's a fairly compact remote, fits into the hand nicely. It uses two AA batteries. You've got shortcuts for your apps, Netflix, Prime Video, Z5. This does depend on the region in which the TV is sold. Then you've got the volume button. This one changes the channel. This home button opens up the menu. This is the back button, play, pause. And then you have these four buttons here. Then you have the enter pad. The numbers are here. This is the microphone button if you have the assistant enabled. And this one turns the power on and off. So it's a fairly easy to use remote. It's also pretty lightweight, although the weight depends on batteries. Also, this is an RF remote. So you don't have to point the remote directly at the TV or the box. You can have the remote down here. So I've got the remote down here and I will be able to power the TV on. So instead of using infrared, this remote uses RF to communicate with the TV wirelessly. This remote is also a universal remote, so that's why you have this IR thingy over here. So if you have a receiver which has an IR remote, you can use the Samsung One remote to control your home theater system or any receiver for that matter of fact. Also to increase or decrease volume, you press it up like this. So that increases the volume press it down like this and that will decrease the volume and if you press down on the key that will mute press it again and that will unmute so it's a pretty intuitive remote i like the fact that it is so compact and it does feel kind of nice to hold in the hand so it's a nice premium feeling remote and lastly the frame tv also works great as a 4k pc monitor the text and stuff is super duper sharp so if i bring my camera up close the text is super duper sharp. This artifacting you see is only on the camera. This is not visible in real life, but the thing is, the text is super duper sharp because this is a 4K screen. And because this is a high resolution 4K display, the pixels are not visible from a regular viewing distance. So that's kind of a refreshing change. I could see all the pixels on my old TV, which was a 1080p 32 inch TV. On this one, even though it's 50 inches, you will not be able to see the pixels from your regular working distance. You really have to come up close to see the pixels. So you have to come up this close if you want to notice the pixels on the screen. Also, the 50 inch frame is able to accept 4K 60Hz signal from the computer and you can play games at 4K 60Hz no problem. Of course, you should have a powerful graphics card to run games at 4K with maxed out details. So 4K 60Hz with HDR is no problem for this TV over HDMI. And if you do plan to get the 55 inch frame, you will be able to play games at 4K 120 FPS because that TV has a 120Hz native refresh rate. And that too will work over HDMI 2.1. But do keep in mind you do need an HDMI 2.1 source if you want to play games at 4K 120 FPS. Otherwise you will be limited to 4K 60 Hz. 
and currently as of August 2020 there are no graphics card that come with HDMI 2.1 ports. Also the Frame TV uses subpixel dimming and that is kind of known to cause weird artifacts on some TVs but in my 15 to 20 days of use I have not noticed any artifacting or any weird dithering on the TV so that is actually good. Alright so that pretty much wraps it up for the review of the Samsung Frame TV and I guess this video is also valid if you get the bigger frame or the smaller frame TV. And I really like this concept of TV displaying something when it is not in use so you do get ambient mode and art mode on the Samsung Frame TV and the fact that the electronics are completely separate that kind of allows you to cut all the clutter of wires around the TV so you do get that seamless look and I am sorry if I have missed out on anything but yeah thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos like these and again if you have any questions do leave them in the comment section down below and I'll try and answer them catch you next time